In this lesson, we'll use some Boolean operations to create masses. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just move to the side here our volumes. We're going to kind of get that out of our attention here. And what I want to do is I want to work on some Boolean operations. So as I mentioned before, that's basically taking primitive geometric forms, put them together, laying them however you want to look at it. You know, you can lay them on top of each other. You can extrude them, bring them together, separate the faces. But taking those simple forms and breaking those down in a way into volumes, but using them to create more complex forms. So let's try it real quick. So there's two ways um, that I think are pretty helpful about going about doing it. So the first one we can do is I'm just going to use my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw my first rectangle here and I'm going to type in 100 feet comma 100 feet. That gives me my uh, two main directions for this particular square. I'll hit enter and it should give me a 100 foot by 100 foot square. So before I do anything else or any kind of uh, rotating or anything, I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to double click it. And what that'll do is it'll select the face and the edges. And like we did in our previous lesson, I'm going to right click and I'm just going to make this a group. That easy. So then I'm going to get my next uh, primitive form here. Let's say we wanted to add an entrance to the corner of this particular building and we're going to do it with a polygon. So I can come to this corner. I can draw this in now. And I just need to tell them uh, what kind of a radius we want. Let's say we want 25 foot radius. It's going to be a pretty big entrance there. So now I'm going to double click on it, getting the face and all its edges highlighted. We'll right click. We'll make that a group. So now what we could do is we can extrude each one of these, you know, and they're going to basically behave independently because they're separate groups. So if you wanted to extrude this particular element, I'll double click on it. Go to push pull and we can move that up. We'll say 25 feet. And that's just for the entrance. And then we could do the same thing here on this side and I want to extrude or push pull this 20 feet. So I want that entrance to be just a little bit larger and I want my model, my basic model to show that this will actually be roofed around here so there will actually be a certain way that these pieces of geometry actually connect here. So how do I go about doing that? So if we take a look at it now you can see there's no straight line and how I know that this geometry is connected properly is we'd actually see a nice hard dark line going in here. So basically it's just two components kind of blended together. Now if we changed our view and we went, changed our face style to an x-ray style you can basically see what I'm talking about here. So it's two different forms just basically set together and I don't know if you can tell here but this area here the more visible dark line if I rotate around you can see that's the area that's visible. And then there's this area where that line actually kind of grays out, and that's because it actually goes inside this geometry. That area where it goes from hard dark line to that gray line, there's an intersection right there. So I'll kind of go with this uh, tool here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We snap in place, and there's an intersection. That's where our two groups intersect. And what we want to do is we want to actually bring these together so that the faces connect and that there's hard lines in place so we can manipulate how these things are connected and not just go with some real basic vague two pieces of geometry plopped together. I want to show how it's connected, how the spaces work with each other. So to do that, as long as we're in groups, all we really need to do is click on one of our elements, right click on it, and you'll see intersect faces. I'm going to do this with model. So I'm going to click with model and when I do that, those lines I mentioned to you appear. So now we have these hard lines that actually show how this geometry is connected. And what it did essentially, it created faces I can now edit to create this to be how I want it to be. So essentially, my goal for this particular little design here is I want to have my entrance, but I want this to actually be carved out within that entrance. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So now that we have some lines and some additional faces and edges in place, I can come in here and I can double click on the one I want to change and I can erase anything I don't need. So right now I can actually probably come in here, so we'll double click on this guy and see if there's anything we can erase. It might actually work better in an x-ray view, so we'll go to view. Let's change our face style to actually wireframe. And now I can come in here and erase any geometry that I don't think I'm going to need. Because I can double click on this element and let's say I want to get rid of this area here. I want this to actually carve into my square. Well, I want to click on this line, but if I highlight this line and I want to get rid of this segment, the point where this intersects, I can't do it because it's all one line. So really the only, there's a trick or a work around for that is grab your line, go from this point to the point you want to delete and draw in that segment. And you'll notice that color appears there. 
So now we have this line and then this line segment. And this portion is the one we wanted to delete. So I can go ahead and erase that and it won't affect the geometry I had in place for my rectangle. So if I want to do the same thing here, I want to carve this out, I'll go to my pen tool and I'll go from this end to that end. And we'll erase that segment. You see how that works? So I can go ahead and get rid of this one here as well. Although that might be a column if we're working with it structurally, but that might come up a little bit later. So now I want to go ahead and get rid of these, the line work that's down here as well. So let's see if I can see it. There's a segment not there. That's good. But there is a segment here I want to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. So we'll go from here to there. And you'll see I have a black line, blue line, which lets me know I have two different segments. So I can erase this line, and I can now clean out that geometry. So if I go ahead and click out of here, and let's say I went back to my X-ray view. Go to view. Change our face style to textures. And X-ray. You can now see that this is actually carved into my square here. So it's pretty, pretty easy stuff, pretty simple, pretty straightforward as well. So that's one way we can actually do that. So the trick is getting your geometry in place, making sure there are groups. But then, you know, once you have it selected, right-clicking, going to Intersect Faces, and you want to intersect with Model. Now, there's a much simpler way to actually work with this, and if you kind of think about things beforehand, before you're doing your extrusions. So I could take the same concept, cut out a couple of steps, and pretty much get the similar result. So I can go, we'll go Rectangle. Draw my rectangle, we'll say 100 feet comma 100 feet. We'll grab our polygon, go with the same radius here, we'll say 25, actually before we do that, scroll in here, go to the center point, we'll say 25 feet, and now what we have here, because SketchUp works with surfaces, because we drew these two and they're overlapping, so we don't just have one rectangular surface and one polygon surface, we now have this surface, this surface, and this surface. So if I wanted this to carve into my square, I can just simply come in here, erase that, come in here, erase that, and now I can extrude these if I wanted to. Or we could double click on it. Let's do that. Let's double click on it, group it, double click this one, group it, and now we can extrude it and we'll get the same desired effect we were trying to get before. So we'll double click this one, go to push pull, 20 feet. Now I'll come to this one here, double click it, push pull, we'll do 20 feet as well. well actually, I think that was 25 feet. So I'll add, add an additional five on there. So now what we have is pretty much the same effect, but this one's a little bit cleaner. Um, we have some additional line work here, but not a problem. We can actually come in here and get rid of this extraneous line work. Now I'm going to keep this one because this one will actually define my edge. So we'll want to keep this line, but we really didn't need that one. But you can see, do the same thing on this side here. So doing it the, the second way is pretty fairly straightforward if you understand how the surfaces work and the portions of your geometry and you also break it up in groups. But you have two ways of going about doing it. You can just simply Draw, draw geometry together, plop them together, and then you know uh, erase whatever lines you want to create whatever face. Or you could use the right-click option and just intersect your faces manually uh, like we did here. Uh, pretty much get the same result from each one. Um, maybe a couple of little extra clicks for the other. Uh, but I find that the effect is the same. Um, but this one I find is just you get cleaner results, less clicks than trying to do it this way. There's a lot of guesswork involved kind of thinking about which face is intersecting and how am I going to get rid of this line and you got to draw double lines. But you have two options of going about doing it. So I'm excited to be able to show you that and this is a way we can again take simple geometry, bringing it together to create more complex geometry that might be hard to do uh, if we didn't use face intersecting or creating our own little surfaces by uh, adding or deleting edges. So and that's our Boolean segment here, pretty short segment but it's a pretty straightforward concept. So in our next lesson, we're actually going to go over folding and rotating surfaces, and we're going to take a look at some of the cool effects that happen when you work with those options. So I'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll fold and rotate some surfaces.